Content creation is more accessible now more than ever. Anybody could pick up their phone, record audio, video, and edit that audio and video to put it out to a platform that could reach millions of people. But in everybody's content creation journey, you're going to reach a point where you're going to want to upgrade your equipment. I know how it feels to be hunting around for gear and uh, finding out that it wasn't for you or if it's not the right choice. And I've also had situations where I bought the right thing, but I was either not ready for it or I just didn't have something to do with it at that moment. I'm Justin, and in this video, I'll show you how this Rode Pod mic could be the first of many upgrades that you'll make in your future. The Rode PodMic is a simple dynamic microphone that is a good introduction to the broadcast style of content creation. At $100, it's a really good quality and gives you that extra bit of cash on the side that could go towards something else in your production. Some reasons why you would find this microphone to be a good first upgrade is that $100 mark. At that point in microphones, you start to see quality get a little bit better. Once you get under the $100 mark, it's really hit or miss of what you're going to get if it's good or bad. Next is the quality of the microphone, and I mean like the craftsmanship. Now this thing is built like a, like a tank. It's really, really well made with a full metal body. And I'll get into it a little later, but that really goes a long way when you're trying to buy gear. You want it to be sturdy and you want it to be made well. Lastly, the sound quality. The Rode Pod mic has a nice wide range of tones that really helps the spoken word be understood and you don't miss any words that are being said with the mids being pronounced and you got a little bit of peaks on the highs in the frequency. Next, I want to compare this microphone to the SM7B by Shure. Now I know it's a big jump, $400 microphone, $100 microphone, how can they compare? Well. Let's get through the backstory of the Shure SM7B before we do that. The Shure SM7B is mostly known for being Michael Jackson's microphone while recording the Thriller album. It's been an industry standard for 35, 40 years, and it really has shown that it stands the test of time and even is considered like the broadcast mic, the broadcast mic, like the king of broadcast mics. As you can imagine, I do not have one, but I do have access to one and once this quarantine is over, I'm going to get my hands on it and uh, do a little comparison with this and see how we can make things work with both of them. Some things to consider when you're getting microphones is there are other variables that go into it. With the Rode Pod mic, it does very well with uh, getting enough gain from a wide variety of recorders. I've put it into a Yamaha mixer. I've put it into a, a Zoom recorder, be it the Zoom F6 or a Zoom Handy recorder, and I get plenty of gain. With the Shure SM7B, there are times where it doesn't get enough gain. It requires a lot of gain to run. So on top of that $400 microphone, you might have to invest in a cloud lifter, which is an extra $100, $150. With all that investment, it's really hard to give a little bit more not thinking that, oh, I should get more out of this $400 microphone than just, oh, I need to buy more. Now that we have our scale with the Rode Pod mic being a baseline, the Shure SM7B being our dream scenario, there are some things to consider before buying a microphone like this. Now, I've watched a bunch of videos, and I've even tested it out myself. You throw some EQ on this Rode Pod mic, and you give it a little bit of love on the back end on the post-production, it gets pretty close, and we're talking a $300 difference. So even if you make up for, like, maybe $100 of it, this microphone's worth the, the investment, considering it's 
only you already have the post-production stuff so use it use it to your advantage and don't give that extra money to something that you might not need also if you have any microphones that are in the same vein or same kind of like uh broadcast style or whatever it may be leave it down in the comments and we'll we'll discuss it we'll talk about it now we're going to get into the build quality of the rode pod mic as i said before this thing is built very well it's got a great craftsmanship it's fully metal body and it was really like they they did a lot of good work on this considering it's a hundred dollars they really put a lot of effort into making this thing the thing that stands out considering its dimensions which are 172 millimeters by 109 millimeters by 62 millimeters now that seems and it is a small microphone not not small but it's smaller than like the sure sm7b for example but the thing is it's a heavy boy. This thing's weighing in at 937 grams, which is roughly about two pounds. That's heavy. And not like Doc Brown Marty that's heavy. That's just heavy. The next thing is the swiveling shock mount that's on it. It really gives you a nice uh, variety of ways to adjust it and adjust it on the fly so you don't have to worry about taking any cords off, taking it off the stand or anything like that. So it's very diverse. Also on the shock mount, there are adjustable screws to allow you to adjust the angle as well. Now, every piece of gear is not going to be perfect. There are two things that are kind of on the fence for me on this Rode Pod mic. One is the placement of the XLR cable. It's right on the butt end of it. And I understand completely why it was done this way because you're trying to cut cut price on it so you don't want it to be too crazy. But the Shure SM7B, considering that's the one we're comparing it to, has a XLR that's on the side and above it. It gives it more flexibility of like adjustments and everything like that and i did say it does have some good adjustment areas but this is one thing that i'm gonna hold up against them but i'm not gonna make it a deal breaker the other thing is this has a built-in like mesh kind of pop filter now it works but it's not flawless it's one of those things like can difference between water resistant or waterproof this is more resistant you want to have something other than just the actual microphone if you only have the microphone it will work it'll be fine but if you could get a extra external pop filter on it it will make your production that much better right now i'm not gonna put anything on it actually all right so now we have an extra pop filter this is a standard pretty foamy pop filter that you could find anywhere and uh you're probably gonna notice the difference exponentially because it's a really thick one it's really nice um especially with me i have very prone voice to plosives so you'll notice a difference you might also notice a difference in sound quality it might sound a little bit muffled as well also i'm not really a fan of this because it kind of takes away from how good it looks if you're wondering what this microphone is good for this is the section for you the Rode Pod Mic was made for podcasting, ergo Pod Mic. This is where the microphone is strongest. It was made for the spoken word and for things to be pronounced properly and heard properly the way it was meant to be heard. It's going to lack in the low, low ends and it's going to lack in the high, high ends, but it's really got a nice variety of the mids and the high mids and the low mids. With those parameters being said, this can be good for Twitch streaming, podcast and even voiceovers that you might want to put out there this next section is what i like to call techie talk basically all the innards and specifics on what this microphone has to offer to start off this microphone is a dynamic microphone which means no phantom power is required to run it so you just plug and play and that's it the polar pattern is a cardioid polar pattern basically means that that front end is where all that sound is going to be heard and then the sides will be a little less and then behind will be pretty muffled let's give it a try so you're gonna hear me in the front right here straight on then we're gonna move to the side 
along to the back just like that and you're gonna probably not hear me as well moving back around you start to hear me a little better and then to the front around to the other side like that and around to the back now we're really gonna get deep into the techie stuff this gets into the frequency response curve. Now, every microphone, as you saw in my Sennheiser video, and if you haven't, click that little eye up there. You Every microphone has a frequency response curve, which is basically like those sine and cosine curves we had in high school. The frequency response range is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz. That basically means the range of tones that it's going to hear. Every microphone is tuned like a guitar, like a piano differently. So it's gonna hear those different things differently. I said it before, it's great in the mids, the low mids, the high mids. When it gets to those edges, uh, closer to the 20 hertz and closer to the 20,000 hertz, 20 kilohertz, it's gonna start tapering off and you're not gonna get as much pronounced uh, tone. Things that I noticed that stand out in the frequency response curve is at 200 to 300 hertz, it bumps a bit, gives you a little bit more in that range. It also, at the 5,000, 6,000, and 9,000, there are peaks, as you can see. The only issue I have with this is that it's really focusing in on the mids, and it can come off as a little muddy. But, like I said before, if you throw a little bit of EQ on it, it should be fine. Moving on, we have the output impedance at 320 ohms. We also have the sensitivity at negative 57 decibels. So basically it requires gain, doesn't require a ton of gain, but it still requires it because it is a dynamic microphone and dynamic microphones most of the time require a little more gain to help it work. All right, the last test I'm gonna do is a distance test. We did the around the world kind of test. Now we're gonna do a test of me going further away. So right now and throughout this video, I've been about two, three inches away. We're gonna move back and I'm gonna show you the level. It's gonna be the same level and we're gonna bump it up a bit. It's just being, this is being recorded into a 32 bit float file. So it can be adjusted without having clipping or any problems like that. So the first thing you're gonna hear, is, and I'll put this in the text up in the, the top corner. We're going to have regular, what it's been, and also it's going to be bumped up a certain amount. I'll put the specifics up in the corner. So this is us about two feet away from the microphone at that level. And now we're going to put it up a bit and show you that it can be compensated for. Moving back a little bit, we're about five feet away. And uh, yeah, so we're going to bump it up a bit and see how that sounds. And hopefully it's not too crazy. Moving back a little bit more, we're about uh, seven-ish. Seven-ish feet, and we're going to bump it up a bit and see how it sounds. Hopefully it's not too crazy. I can see the levels, and it's still picking me up pretty well. Probably a little muffled now. So that is the Rode Pod mic. This microphone is a very sturdy build of a microphone. It's really well made, and especially for that $100 mark, it, it's amazing that they got this microphone to be sold sold cheaply. I, don't, I mean, I mean cheaply in the sense of it's not a lot of money. I don't mean it in the anything against it. Uh, you look at this microphone, and if you were to see it on like a stand or whatever, you would expect it to be like a two, three hundred dollar microphone. But it's at a hundred dollars, and I think this is the best deal you're ever gonna get for a microphone. And that's saying a lot because I love my AT2020, and I love a lot of other microphones that I have. But this one, it might take the cake for it. Thank you all for watching that video. If you like that video, please hit the like button down below and also subscribe for more videos that are coming out in the future. Smack that little bell and ring it so you can know when more videos are coming out and be notified. If you have any questions, you can just feel free to leave it down in the comments down below. And if you wanna do more direct and ask me questions directly, you could check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash ghetto happy. 
play a wide variety of games and I'll be happy to answer any questions, audio, video, whatever wise, and I'll try my best to answer the video ones as best as possible. I'm a little bit of a novice when it comes to video, but as far as audio, I'm pretty good. So that's it. Everybody be safe out there. Wash your hands, wear gloves, wear a mask, try to stay in as much as possible, and I will see you next time. Cozy. It's very, very nice. We used to love it back in the world. Back when the world was a little bit smaller. No one will ever know that the U-boat ended up in the jungle. <laughs>